Hi there, my name is Laura and I'm a type 1 diabetic. This is the first video that I am making about my diabetes and I thought that this would be a good time to start because I am about to start a new pump. I've been on multiple daily injections for the last couple of months and I uh, just recently received all of my Omnipod Dash system materials and I've got a meeting set up with my pump trainer tomorrow. So we'll be uh, getting that all set up and put on me for the first time and I will start pumping. I'm very excited about this. Uh, multiple daily injections have been good for me. I've been able to manage my numbers pretty well using injections, but I'm just really excited about the flexibility and the tighter control that the pump is going to give me. I'll show you what I currently have. So I have been using Lantus as my long acting insulin and Humalog as my short acting. And I use pens. So this is my Lantus pen. I've got a pen tip on there right now. It's one of the really tiny micro fine ones. You may not even really be able to see it here, but it's itty bitty and it's not painful. I've never had a big issue with shots uh, when I was a kid. My body actually didn't produce enough human growth hormone. So I took shots every day as a child. And it's funny because I remember my dad telling me that I was lucky that I wasn't diabetic because then I would have to take shots for the rest of my life. And uh, look who's laughing now, dad. So that's the Lantus. And then my short acting insulin is Humalog and that's in pen form as well. And again, I've got the same pen tip on there right now. And I do change those out. I just had them all ready to go. Um, so that's my current regimen. Uh, I had recently picked up this case that I carry everything around in that I'm very proud of. It's a light up hamburger case that I found at Target. It's supposed to be a pencil case, but it's just the right size for all of my diabetes supplies. It's got some little pouches over here. I keep my blood glucose meter on this side and my pens over there. You can see I've got my lancing device in there as well. So I received the Omnipod Dash materials last week. Um, and this was all really kind of a surprisingly fast process for me. So I'll tell the whole story of my diagnosis and um, how I came to be here in a different video. I think that deserves its own dedicated time. But long story short, um, I haven't been on insulin for very long. I was diagnosed officially with type 1 at the end of July. I had already been on Lantus for about a month at that point, um, but I added the short-acting insulin at the end of July. So at this point, it's been about a month and a half since I started taking the Humalog in addition to my Lantus, and I didn't expect to move to a pump so quickly. You know, I've heard lots of people say that their doctors want them to be on injections for a certain period of time to kind of get used to things, make sure that they've got a handle on it, can get control of their numbers with those injections, really understand how the insulin works in their bodies. And I totally get that. I don't think that it's necessary for every single individual, but I understand why that would be a starting point for lots of physicians. I was lucky that I got into an endocrinologist's office with a nurse practitioner who is really a big advocate for the technology. So um, the first time that I saw her, before we had even done the C-peptide testing to figure out if I was type one for sure, she was all about me getting a Dexcom. I knew that I wanted that. And so she sent in the order and I got on a Dexcom right away. So I've been using that for about a month and a half as well. And that's been amazing. I think if anything, the Dexcom is the most important tool in my toolkit right now. Um, it makes controlling my numbers a million times easier than when I just get little glimpses into what my blood sugar is doing with finger pricks. And I was finger pricking a lot, like upwards of 10 times a day. So the Dexcom is 100% a game changer. And I would recommend that anybody who can get that, who has the financial means, the um, insurance coverage, please do that. It's going to change your life. I was interested in a pump. 
So I was just kind of poking around, seeing what was available. Um, I was interested in Tandem and I was interested in Omnipod. So I reached out to Omnipod and I asked for one of their demo kits. They sent it over, they called me, um, they asked me how I had liked the demo, if I would like them to reach out to my insurance and see about coverage. So I said, sure, why not? They did. Um, and within a few days, I had gotten a phone call back saying that, you know, my insurance was providing a certain amount of coverage and they had already requested approval from my doctor's office. My doctor had sent a script over to the pharmacy and I could fill that script that day. I hadn't really had a chance to look into Tandem yet. I was interested in the T-Slim. I kind of knew that I wasn't super excited about the tubing and just, you know, some of the issues that can come along with that. Um, I did really enjoy my Omnipod demo. I've heard amazing things about Omnipod and I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna go for it. One of the great things about the Dash system, it's a pharmacy benefit. So they actually provide the Dash PDM for free now. They send that to you and you just pay for your pods through the pharmacy. So that means that if I decide that I don't like it and I only wanna use it for a couple of months, I can always switch to something else later on. You know, it's I'm not bound by the warranty on my PDM and my insurance shouldn't have an issue switching me to a different pump. So all that being said, it was very quick from requesting the demo to actually having access to the Omnipod. I had to change my prescription from the Humalog pens to Humalog vials. So I've got my vial of Humalog here. So that's my new insulin. I'm going to show you what came from Omnipod to get started. So this is the new PDM. And it just looks like a cell phone. I mean, it is just a locked down Android device from what I understand. So I actually got this purple case with it. It's just black on its own. Um, but they asked me when they called about sending the PDM, um, they said that they could provide a colored case for it and let me pick my color. So I asked for purple. That's the one that I have here. So it's cute, it's sleek, you know, it's it's familiar. We all know how to use a touchscreen phone, so that's great. Um, I'm gonna turn it on and show you a little bit what it looks like. I'll get through my lock screen here. There's what the screen looks like. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it through my camera, but you know, just some basic information there. Here's the bolus button down here. Obviously it says that I don't have a pod connected right now. I won't do that until I talk to my trainer tomorrow. But that's what it looks like, and it looks like it's really simple to use. I was a little bit concerned that it might be confusing at first learning how to adjust temporary basal rates or um, even just figuring out my first bolus, but after playing around with it for a couple of minutes, I'm confident that it's going to be very easy to use. So that's the PDM. Here is my pod. So each new pod comes in a little packet like this. It's just a plastic packet with some paper on the back. And you can see the pod is in there. And this one has a blue tab because this is the dash system. So Omnipod still has their arrow system. That's the older one. The pods are the same shape. The difference is that these new pods communicate via Bluetooth and the old ones communicate via radio waves. So they can't work interchangeably. You have to have the dash pods for the dash system. You have to have the arrows pods for the arrows system. So you get the pod, you also get a syringe that comes in here. So that's what I'll use tomorrow when I set it up with my pump trainer to draw up my insulin and put it in the back of my pod. And I'll show you more about that later. The Omnipod dash system, because the PDM is now, you know, this locked down Android phone, it no longer has an incorporated blood glucose meter. The old one had a meter that was right in the bottom of the PDM that used uh, freestyle strips. And so you would just stick a strip right in the bottom of your PDM and you could test your blood sugar. This one doesn't have that. So Omnipod sent along with the PDM, a Contour Next One blood glucose meter. 
So that's what that looks like. It's very small. And mine unfortunately came with a little, something is wrong with the screen. There's like little pixels that are lit up up here that aren't supposed to be. And I've actually seen other people online say that theirs came that way too. I don't really care. I'm honestly probably not gonna use this meter all that often. I have another one that I like that I get the strips for free. Uh, so this will just be a backup meter for me. But this one does connect via Bluetooth to your Omnipod PDM. So there's no longer the incorporated blood glucose meter, but this one is just as easy. It'll automatically send all of your readings over to the PDM once you have it connected. And of course, this also came with a lancing device and it came with 10 free test strips. So for tomorrow, I've got my PDM and my pod and I've got my vial of Humalog. This will act as all of my insulin. I won't use Lantus anymore at all. I will use Humalog only. I've got those. I've got some alcohol swabs just to clean the site. I think for the first time around, I'm gonna put it on my arm. So I'll try to check back in with you after I have my meeting with my pump trainer and show you the Omnipod on my arm and let you know how it went. And I'm not going to take my dose of Lantus in the morning like I normally would because you have to go 24 hours without your long acting insulin before you can start. So I took my last dose this morning at 9 a.m. I won't take one in the morning. I'm a little bit nervous about what the first part of tomorrow is going to be like without any long acting insulin, but I figure if I start to drift up higher than I'd like, I'll just take an extra bolus and try to keep that under control. So this was a long intro to this video, um, but I really just wanted to record the beginning of this journey with my pump, hopefully provide a little bit of information to people who might be interested in starting on an Omnipod, people who might be um, curious about switching from MDI to a pump, anybody who's nervous about it. To be honest, I'm a little bit nervous. I've never done this before. I'm an adult with type 1 diabetes. You know, I was diagnosed as an adult. Um, I don't have anybody walking this journey with me every single day. So every choice that I make is on my own. Like I've heard so many good things about Omnipod that it's going to be a good change. I'm excited. It's a little bit like Christmas Eve right now. So thank you for following along with me. I'll check back in with you tomorrow after I've met with my pump trainer. Hi, so I am back. New day, new shirt, new cup of coffee, got my fresh brew here, and I am excited to check in with you guys after completing my pump training. And uh, we had a really nice time together. She went over all of the settings. I think I told you earlier that I had already gone ahead and entered my settings into my PDM. And uh, so we just went through those and made sure that everything was correct and um, that my maximum basal and bolus amounts were where they needed to be and all that good stuff. Um, she pointed out all the features of the PDM that I might need to use and just clarify some kind of frequently asked questions sort of information. Uh, I think she was pleasantly surprised because I have been doing a lot of research on my own. I wasn't new to the system, you know, it, it was a little easier than starting from scratch, like I would assume she has to do with a lot of people that she trains. So it was a good time. I think we had scheduled about an hour and a half for the meeting overall. And we ended up only using about an hour. She asked if I had any questions. And this is an issue that I always have when I go to doctors. I can't think of questions until after the fact. I'm just you know, I, my mind starts racing. I get nervous about the interaction and uh, all my questions just go out the window. So I do genuinely think that I've got a good grasp on the system, but you know, I'm sure questions will arise as I continue to use it. Uh, I'm already feeling like, oh man, my first bolus is gonna be a little bit scary, but um, I'm sure it's gonna be just fine and a lot easier to fine tune than the full unit injections that I was doing before. So my first pump is on my arm over here. And I decided to just do the back of my arm this time because, you know, we were on the video. I wanted her to be able to see where I was putting it and the arm felt like the most easily accessible spot. So that's where it is this time. I'm sure that I will 
rotate through all the different sites at some point. Uh, I'm a little scared of my lower back area. I know that lots of people put it there and they love it, but I don't know, something about it seems weird to me. Like, I feel like I'm gonna lay on it and it's gonna hurt my butt when I'm sleeping or something. So we'll see. I'm sure I'll have to do it at some point because I'm really wanting to avoid having absorption issues by using the same sites too frequently. So I guess I can show you, we did use all of the supplies that I showed you earlier. Um, I've got some, my little bin of trash here. I've got my alcohol wipes that I use to clean off the top of my insulin vial and the pod site. I used the syringe that came with the Omnipod and it is actually very short. And then I just collected everything in my empty pod container and I'll throw this obviously in the sharps container and the rest will go in the trash. So it was easy. The insertion, you know, it did the thing that everybody talks about where you hit start and then it clicks and the clicking is a little bit nerve wracking, um, but it went in on about the fifth click and I hardly even felt it, to be honest. Now, it might help that I have a little extra padding on my body. Having a little extra layer of fat on my arms um, or wherever it is that I'm inserting it might help with the pain a little bit. Somebody who's a lot leaner than I am may feel it more than I did. Um, but I'm gonna just, you know, pay attention to this one over the next few days, but see if there's any irritation or tenderness um, with the actual insulin going into my body. Um, I did notice that when I was doing injections, the insulin often burned. Um, the Lantus definitely burned, but the Humalog did sometimes too. So um, we'll see if that happens with the Humalog in the pump, or if maybe it's going in in small enough amounts that it won't be as big of an issue. So I will keep you updated on that. Uh, let me know in the comments down below if you have any specific questions about Omnipod. Let me know if you're a pod or two and how you like it if you've been using it for a while. And uh, I hope that this has been informational for you and given you insights that you might be looking for as you look into insulin pumps, maybe changing from one to another or leaving injections behind. Um, I definitely would encourage anybody who's interested in using a pump to really advocate for that with your doctor because there's no reason to be using injections if you don't want to. If you love your injections and you have great control with your injections, that's awesome. But if you want a pump, you should be able to have a pump. So I encourage you to just keep looking into it and advocating for yourself. Hey everybody, I'm back. It is now day three of the Omnipod pump start. I just wanted to check back in with you all and finish up with a few last thoughts about how this whole process has gone. So it's been really good overall. Um, as I said, when I checked in with you yesterday, the training was smooth. It wasn't painful. Everything kind of went as expected. Um, and I, you know, had a little bit of hesitation about just making that transition from multiple daily injections to now having a steady drip of insulin happening through the pump and transitioning from the long acting Lantus to only Humalog for both basal and um, short acting insulin. So it's been a little bit bumpy the last 24 hours, I would say. I'm still just trying to figure out exactly how much basal insulin I need. And of course that's gonna be a little bit of a process. So I had had my rates pretty finely tuned. I knew exactly how much Lantus I needed. I felt like my basal was right on when I was taking Lantus. And of course that doesn't directly translate over to how a pump works. So now that I'm just getting the Humalog in those little tiny drips throughout the day, I'm a little more sensitive to the insulin than I was before. I've had to be careful with my pre-bolusing. Before I could pre-bolus, I don't know, maybe 45 minutes to an hour in advance of a meal sometimes. I had a couple of moments last night where I didn't really pre-bolus and my blood sugar still dropped either before the meal even started or as I was eating. So those are just, you know, little things that I'm going to have to play with and figure out how my body works. Um, I have tested some of the temp basal rates. 
I played with an extended bolus last night because I was eating something that had a little more fat in it. And those are definitely tools that I'm looking forward to using on a regular basis. Of course, it'll be a little bit easier once I understand exactly how my body reacts to the insulin from the pump. And of course, that's not always the same day to day. So it'll just be an adventure of learning as I go. All in all, I'm very happy with the Omnipod. I can say there is no pain today on the site. Um, I don't feel it. I've been having some muscle pain in general, but it doesn't have anything to do with this, and this doesn't seem to be making it worse, so that's good news. Overall, I'm finding it much simpler and more streamlined to bolus for meals. I had McDonald's spicy chicken nuggets <laughs> earlier, which I should probably be ashamed to admit, but I'm not. And you know, it was easy. I found the carb count for it in my food library, right on my PDM. And McDonald's chicken nuggets were in there, their sauces were in there, french fries were in there, so I plugged it all in and I bolused for it. I'm finding that my insulin to carb ratio that my doctor had me put in my PDM is not quite right for me. I, she wanted to start out conservatively, which I get. I ended up having to correct a little bit, but the great news is it's really easy to deliver a correction with this. You know, if I watch my Dexcom an hour after I eat and my blood sugar is rising, I just deliver a little more insulin and that's no big deal. And I can do it in half units or even smaller doses, which is not something that I had the option to do before. So that has been a wonderful component of the new system. That's all I can think to tell you about right now. Day three, very happy with my Omnipod. I'm looking forward to many, many more pod changes and updates with you guys. I will keep you informed about anything new that happens. Um, and I'll be back with some different content soon. I'd like to film a video about my diagnosis story, if that's something that people would be interested in hearing. I know that when I was first diagnosed, I found a lot of comfort in the YouTube community and watching other diabetics tell their stories and finding people that I had something in common with. It's, it's an experience that's so hard to relate to if you've never been through it. So I would like to share my diagnosis story so that anybody who has been on a similar path might be able to just find a little bit of comfort in the knowledge that somebody else has been there too. So. I hope that you all are staying healthy and happy, and I will see you again in the next video. Bye-bye.